I have several puzzle piece brushes that I use. Uh, this is one of them, a nice example. Um, as you can see, I've got several of them here, including individual puzzle pieces. And stay tuned to see uh, exactly how I make these. Alright, we're going to start with a square, which I have set for 27%. And the reason I've done that is because the uh, lines of the square is going to be approximately the same size as the monoline brush set for 1%. I'm using the square 2 that we created. We tap in the middle. And then let's make sure that it's in the middle. We've got magnetics and snapping on. So I simply move this over until I get the yellow line, and then I move it up and down until I get the yellow line, and there we go, it's perfectly centered. Now we're going to go up a layer. Um, you notice that I have the uh, reference or the drawing guide set for quadrants. I am not using rotational symmetry. We will turn the drawing assist on, and then we will draw a nub here at the top. Once we go to the monoline brush. It's just an S-curve that is mirrored, and I've changed the opacity of these to about 50% just to make sure that my S-curve comes all the way down here. And since we know it does, I'm going to max out the opacity again. For the center of this, I want it to match up and be a nice flat here, so we're going to erase part of it. And I'm going to draw a line going from one side to the other. And because it's symmetry, it crosses over, and you just simply make sure that that line is one solid piece there. And that creates the nub at the top and the bottom. Now what we're going to do is duplicate that hit the select and we're going to rotate 45 degrees twice. And now you have two side nubs to go with your top and bottom nubs. We're going to merge these down, and we're going to go to about 50% opacity again, so that we can see all these. And what we want to do is create a situation where we can have these nubs inside, outside, wherever we want, however many we want. So we're going to go down to layer 6. I'm going to duplicate that and turn it off. And then I am going to erase inside this. If we want to turn on the drawing assist, we can do that. And that way we get the top and the bottom at the same time. And we get the left and the right at the same time. We'll turn the drawing assist off and off. And now on layer 6, 
we need to have enough room for the nubs and enough room for the corners. So I'm going to, on layer 6, do a freehand selection and grab just the corners. And I'm going to copy and paste that. And that, of course, gives us these lines, which is what we're going to match up with these. I'm going to merge that down. And then if I duplicate this and flip it horizontal, all of our lines going left and right are now of equal length. So we merge that down. Duplicate it. Flip it vertical. And the lines going up and down are now also matched. We merge that down. And that's a pretty quick and easy way of matching those up. Now, on layer 6, we want to get just the corners. So we're going to do a freehand selection. I'm going to grab corner corner, 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 copy and paste, and that gives us just these corners. And we're going to do the same thing here that we did before. We're going to duplicate it, flip it horizontal, merge it down, duplicate it, flip it vertical, and merge it down. And this is a nice cheaty way to uh, ensure that you have the same length of lines for everything. So we've got layer 7, which contains our nubs. And we've got this from selection layer, which contains our corners. Now what we want to do is take the nubs and duplicate it. We'll turn this one off. And on this one, with the opacity set around 50% for both of these layers, I am going to freehand select the top nub and with the snapping on for magnetics and snapping I'm going to move this down and then I'm going to freehand select the bottom nub and we're going to move that up to match it with that line Sometimes with snapping, it doesn't quite go all the way up. Let's see. That's okay. And then we grab this one. And we match it at the bottom. And here we have a whole other puzzle piece that we can save if we want to. Uh, you can do this having one, two, three, or in our case, four nubs pointing inwards. So since we're doing the four nubs pointing inwards, we're going to select, still on the freehand selection, 
this nub and we're going to move it all the way outside here. And we're going to select this nub and we're going to move it to match on this side. Check to make sure that it matches up really well. It could probably go an extra pixel. There we go. And then we'll grab this one and we will move it into here. And this gives us the nubs going in. Let's duplicate the corner layer. Max out our opacity. Merge the corners down. We're going to max out the opacity for these next two layers. And we'll merge those down. So now that we have all of this, we're going to group them together. I'm going to take these two we're going to copy them. And move the copies out of the group. This way we are keeping a copy of everything that we need here. Let's take the one here that we called corners. And we're going to slide it this way. And we want it to match in with this. To make sure that they're matching in, we'll change the opacity again, just to see if we have any overlap. And it doesn't look like we do. And we're going to duplicate that. And we're going to move it all the way over here. Let's get those matched in together. And I'm lazy. I'm going to group that, duplicate it, take this group, Rotate it 45 degrees twice, and we've got that doubled up already. Then I'm going to go into one of these, take this one, duplicate it, move it out of the group, and we're going to move it over here, and then up to here. And we'll duplicate that and move it to here. We'll duplicate that, move it down. You can, of course, do the rotate thing to duplicate these if you want. Duplicate that and move it over here. I now have a grid of 9. We're going to max out the opacity on all of our pieces.
and that gives us the corners, the ends, and the middle. Okay, let's stop there and take a look at what we have. Um, it looks really nice, this 9x9 nine nine grid. However, you need the piece on this side to fit into the piece on this side. So that means we're going to need one of these on one side or the other. So let's clear that. I'm going to take this whole group here and I'm going to shrink it down. Just like that. Now what I need to do is find one of these middle pieces. We're going to duplicate it, and we're going to slide it over here. that it matches up there. Where's that piece? That's a duplicate of this piece here, so that makes life easy. And Let's duplicate this one, and we're going to move it over to here. That looks nice. And then, of course, we want to have the same thing going the other way. Right now, what we have is this piece can fit into this. This fits into this, and this fits into this. So, we just need to find our other Let's find out where this one is. This one's right here. Let's move it up to here. Okay. This one. We move up to here. And this one, we move up to here, and then we need to move a copy of this one up to here. So, everything on the right side will fit snugly on the left, and everything on the top will fit snugly on the bottom. Now, we can take these groups and flatten. And we've got this whole section here. We'll call it Puzzle. Duplicate it, turn it off in case we make mistakes. Those happen. We're going to take this and we're going to move it 
so that this line just touches the edge. And then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. We're going to move until that line just touches on the edge. And then we're going to take, make sure you're on free form, not uniform. We're going to stretch this until that line just disappears. difficult to tell when it just disappears so I'm going to temporarily change its color and then we'll do our stretching there we are and then we'll do the same thing on this side so it just disappears that way everything on the top will be sharing the lines on the bottom and everything on the left will be sharing the lines on the right. So stretch this. Whoops. That was not a stretch. Give me a stretch. I can tell it's stretching because the width height numbers change there. Just disappears. And here we have our puzzle piece selection, which we are going to make white. We can now copy this, and in our puzzles, well, in my puzzles, I've duplicated this puzzle 8-1 um, so I can show you how the settings go. The spacing is set for 9%. Taper is all off. The shape is a circle. If you don't have circle for a shape, go to Edit import source library and choose the circle grain is where we want to put the picture this way we're painting with the circle solid color but it's being affected by the grain which is our puzzle pieces so we go to edit import paste Done. Uh, movement is rolling. I've got the scale set for 50%, depth max, and the improved filtering. I didn't change anything on render. Um, I've got it on a light glaze. Uh, flow is max. Everything else is basically turned off. Wet mix, the pool is 50%. No color dynamics, no dynamics. The Apple Pencil, I changed the opacity to none. Remember the default is all the way up to max or something like that. Um, properties, I've got this set for 51% preview. I do not have it orient to screen or stamp preview. My smudge is set to none. Maximum size I've got is 430, minimum is 30. Maximum opacity and minimum opacity are both max. That's because I want a nice solid brush. And then of course you give it a name, create your reset point, and you're ready to use this particular brush. So 
if I go to black, I should be painting that in. Oh, I know what the problem is. I'm on the wrong layer. This one. And as you can see, we get a nice little pattern going here. Which you're painting in all nice and clear. Let's change the background color just because we can. We'll turn that off. We'll duplicate that layer, duplicate that layer. Alpha lock, alpha lock. I'm going to change this one to multiply. I'm going to change this one to screen. And then I'm going to choose a gray color. Fill that layer. Fill that layer. We take this layer. We go up two ticks. Three ticks, maybe? Yeah, three ticks looks better. And we'll go down to the right. Three ticks on the multiply layer. And there we have embossed the picture of a puzzle on whatever background you have. In my case, I just had this nice little picture that I whipped up real quick for the purposes of this tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed how to make puzzle pieces. Um, as you can see, I have all sorts of them. I have my puzzle pieces where we've got all four out one in two in two in side to side three in and four in um, with these puzzle pieces you can actually make any puzzle design you want to make this particular puzzle picture here where everything goes all wonky. What I did was I set the drawing guide to 2D grid. And I made little bitty tick marks. One, two, three. Let's see. Is that a good size? No, that's not a good size for a puzzle. At regular intervals. Merge that down, duplicate, flip it going this way. And erase the extras down here. Merge that down. And however you do it, it doesn't matter as long as you get regular on both sides. That way, when you create your puzzle pieces manually, as long as you start at this point and end at this point, your puzzle piece
is going to be matching top bottom left right um, it took a long time to do that one so I'm just showing you real quick how it was done I will leave it to you to make that particular puzzle piece if you want um, like I said I have all kinds of puzzle pieces here um, it's a nice way to take your pictures and make them look like they're puzzles Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and you have a wonderful day.